Thank you, good morning, and uh, great to be here. Appreciate the, the opportunity. This um, logo here, Base Camp for a Better World, uh, is a, an inspiring statement, and I guess we're very much in the space of a better New Zealand, uh, looking at what we can do uh, to prepare New Zealand to strengthen the ecological resilience that we have here for changes that are coming. Um, just a quick background on Next Foundation. I'm not sure what, how much you've heard, but I'm just talking about the environmental projects. So the foundation's involved in education and environment. My particular area is the environmental programs. Uh, so small beginnings for this project. First thing we did, which was actually a precursor to Next Foundation itself, but the same funders, uh, was restoration of an island in the Hariki Gulf. Small, uh, privately owned, owned and converted from what had been an alcohol rehab uh, facility for the Salvation Army for 104 years into a new ecological destination in the Hariki Gulf. Um, very exciting project and a chance for us to really have a look and see what could be achieved with philanthropic funding. So Next Foundation, um, as you're probably aware, uh, is funded by one couple from Northland. We have a magnificent uh, endowment, but we've been told to spend it in 10 years, $100 million. Um, what we discovered when we first called for proposals was it wasn't going to go very far. The first 287 applications totaled $1.9 billion and made us realise that we we're going to have to get smart about how we spend our money. After the experience in the Rotorua Island, we moved on to Abel Tasman National Park. Uh, how many of you have been to the Abel Tasman? Quite a few, that's cool. So hopefully you've seen dying pine trees, dying weeds, uh, birds coming back, and lots of control of, of predators through there. What you might not have seen is the education programs that sit behind that, the connection of young people to the place. Uh, a lot of wonderful things happening there to future-proof the project by creating a whole bunch of young champions for the work down there. In many ways, this was a game-changing project. I think it's fair to see, I see Lou in the back there. I think we really helped to energise the DOC partnership approach, and so the relationship with the Department of Conservation is really important to us. They were modelling landscape scale uh, involvement. So we're not interested in small projects, we're interested in big projects that create models for how we might go further and faster in terms of uh, re ecological resilience for New Zealand's landscapes. I think we've established a great deal of credibility with iwi over time. Uh, the project inspired the formation of the Next Foundation and it led to a thing called the Tomorrow Accord. And this is reflecting the fact that it's not a good use of philanthropic funds to create endowment funds to fund a project forever to keep pests out of the Able Tasman. So what we did was agree uh, with the government uh, in a, uh, a document called the Tomorrow Accord that we would be the strike force. We would pre-agree the indicators of transformation of these places, and when we achieved those goals, the Crown would take responsibility for funding it for the rest of the time. And that allowed us to think about our next projects uh, and to make sure that we we're really focused on delivering results that would allow us to step on to the next project. Then we started thinking about this whole question of ecological resilience. Um, how do we transform at uh, landscape scale? How do we secure at least 80% of New Zealand's terrestrial biodiversity across altitudinal and latitudinal ranges? How do we assure that these ecosystems are well placed to deal with climate change effects? And the obvious climate change effects are things like high wind speeds, changes in uh, weather patterns, uh, rainfall and so on, uh, temperatures. But one of the uh, less obvious ones perhaps is that eventually government's going to get serious about dealing with infrastructure changes required to adjust to changing sea levels and so on. And there might not be so, money around, so much money around for this ecological work. So how do we get on with it and in the next decade or two make a big difference before some of those other pressures really start to impact? So we're creating the lifeboats across the country uh, in the places where these species can adjust they can go up the mountains if it's getting hotter. Uh, we can, if we have to, because they're not all connected up, we can shift species around from place to place to situations where it's more suitable for them. So we're working at the moment uh, with the department and we developed this list with them on a suite of properties across the country that represent altitudinal, latitudinal range and represent a, a, a significant proportion of the ecosystem types uh, across New Zealand. Uh, that we think could secure that, that biodiversity in the long term. Uh, total is about 1.3 million hectares, so that's about 16% of the conservation estate. Most of it's on conservation estate because of the close relationship with the department. Um, but as you'll see shortly, uh, one or two of them are escaping beyond that. 
So let me just focus on uh, Taranaki. How many of you know Egmont National Park? Quite a few. So this is the volcano that sits out on the, uh, on the west coast of the North Island. Um, it's a perfect circle when you fly over it. Somebody had a protractor out and it's 9.7 kilometres radius, 35,000 hectares. Um, quite remarkable in the sense that it's got no pigs and no deer on it, uh, so the foliage is actually in pretty good shape except for the impact of some goats and, uh, and a few possums. Um, but it's really quiet. If you walk on that mountain, there's not a lot of bird life there. So you know, our first approach is, uh, was to set up a consortium uh, to work on this. So the eight iwi of Taranaki are uh, founding partners of this project, as is the department, as is Next Foundation. And then we brought a bunch of other folk in to help um, put this project together. This is now fully committed, $24 million for the next 10 years uh, to make a difference in this place, and it's tracking really well. The one I'm working on at the moment uh, is this place. So Araki Mackenzie, which includes the Araki National Park, includes the braided systems at the head of Lake Tekapo and Pukaki, and is 300,000 hectares of, of uh, vital drylands country, essentially, on the, uh, on the east coast of the South Island. So we've got scale, we've got uh, huge potential in terms of the protection of braided river birds, like the black stilt, for example, of which we have 123 in the world, and most of them live in this, uh, in this particular zone, and a whole bunch of other uh, endangered species also associated uh, with that location. The cool thing about this project is it's about 60% conservation land, but the rest of it is in either other uh, departments of government, including 16,000 hectares of Defence Force um, Afghan Training Centre, uh, and about 10 uh, high country range holders here, or farmers in that area. And so we've been working with the iwi, uh, with those 10 run holders, uh, with LINS, with the Defence Force, with um, uh, Canterbury Regional Council, with the department to put together a group, again, a, a consortium that's interested in achieving the changes that we want to achieve there. And, uh, so, and so we continue to think about how do we take this, this project forward. Uh, there are two others in active discussion at the moment, Stewart Island and the Auckland Islands, which we would like to get sorted. And there are uh, a number, as you saw, through the rest of the country that are, are of interest. So. Um, this is the, the, the black stilt that doesn't look so black when it's young. It changes to black. Um, so what do we bring to these conversations? Well, one of the interesting things is we come in with relatively little baggage. And when you're sitting there with iwi and the Department of Conservation, um, sometimes you, you, you sort of you, you get all the history, not just of the Department of Conservation iwi relationships, but of the Crown iwi relationships. And so it's very good to be a neutral player, sort of a fresh voice in that conversation. Put that stuff aside, that's not important to what we're talking about today, let's talk about how we take something forward. And that's had an effect in Taranaki, for example. Um, the eight iwi who are part of, of that consortium had never really sat around the table together um, to talk about a project like this. And as it happens, they were about to start on the joint negotiations on what was going to happen to Egmont National Park, Mount Taranaki. And so it became a test bed for how they worked together and I think it's helped the start of that process of, of dealing with that treaty claim. We're focused on transformation, so we're not looking to tinker around the edges. We want to make significant sustainable changes in these places. Got to be sustainable solutions. We bring professional management. We bring an urgency to deliver that often isn't there on these projects. And we bring a willingness to challenge, and that includes uh, challenging the dock experts, challenging the scientists in New Zealand to think differently about some of these problems and to help us to accelerate uh, the process towards change. And we have a strong sense of responsibility about what we're trying to achieve here, so it's back to this uh, base camp for a better world um, here for New Zealand to try and uh, significantly change the biodiversity and uh, transform that ecological framework. That might be the end. Thank you.